Hello, thank you so much. My name is Joshua Kalawale. Uh, I'm into the EDLD program, and I want to discuss my design um, video, but more importantly, my instructional design overview. And that's the goal of this discussion. Uh, so, and I would be designed under the context of the student-centered versus teacher-led kind of um, instructional design. Uh, and I'm also understanding the role of teacher that is evolving from being the uh, sage on the stage to now be the guide by the side, which gives more responsibility to the learner to become better um, as against the teacher to have to do the whole of the teaching and then get the student to just absorb the content. Now we're talking about the context and the content evolving and then the student taking full responsibility and enabling the COVA approach, the CLSC that's uh, creating a significant a CSL a like significant learning environment and um, giving learners choice, uh, ownership, voice, and authentic application of their learning. And so with this, uh, it gives ubiquitous access to, to the student and then uh, drives social networking, collaborativeness, continuous engagement uh, amongst learners. And then uh, our instructional format, like I will be expanding later, is is a form of blended. We have the face-to-face -face portion. We have leveraging on the Google Classroom and then Zoom platform at different points to facilitate learning. Uh, we're both, um, we're still evolving from the competence-based uh, kind of learning to the outcome-based uh, kind of education. So um, my design will be reflecting both uh, method. Um, and then um, the, the concept of the alignment of goals and our outcomes, activities and assessment, uh, I would also be discussing on that and then I'll define the owner of the academic standard. So permit me to share my screen uh, to be able to start this discussion. So um, I, just a moment, please. New share. So I need a new share. I'll share this. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. So I'm, share, I'm sharing the instructional design for a blended learning course for introduction to data analysis. Now, this is on the statistics, but uh, more importantly, we'll be using the Python um, programming kind of uh, language for, for this data analysis. So the level of instruction is focused, uh, targeted towards advanced level curriculum. These are post-secondary school or what we call high school here in the United States, back in Africa, where Valdemar's College is situated. Valdemar's College um, is, is a college focused on the advanced level educational system, which is transitionary between the high school and the university uh, system. We call college university generally. So there are colleges of education, colleges of nursing, but more importantly, what we call post-secondary school education more in a, in, a, in, a, in a university system where degree awarding education is, is in the university. So this is equivalent to year one uh, college education here in the United state. So my intended audience will be advanced level students who are doing their transitionary programs from um, high school. They will, they've completed their programs in high school. So they do like a one year, one to two year program at, uh, as an A-level student and they use it to secure admission into 200 level in the university uh, in Africa. So the key institutional document will be the course syllabus or template, which I should be sharing. Uh, in a moment, um, let me let me stop the sharing and then share that so that we can uh, you can go along with me. Uh, so this is the curriculum for this. So I had to work with the I, I, I'm a leader in the school, so I had to work with one of the teacher who is actually taking the data analysis with Python. Um, so we uh, this has been designed for a while, so we just had to add more to it and tweak it uh, to fit for purpose of what I want to do as well. And also it has helped build uh, more structure into what I'm doing. So this is the course overview. In the era where data is supreme, um, the ability to analyze data and to analyze it and then to bring it up visually 
for decision, for best decision making. That's crucial to whatever we're doing. So Python programming, we have the basics part, we have the understanding of data analysis, actually diving into the world of data analysis and exploring the intricacies of importing, cleaning up and visualizing data, which is most important thing. And far beyond just visualizing, I think the most important connection with the real world that's when making meaningful connection now, based on this instructional design, is to be able to enhance data decision making for managers. So we have the use of advanced techniques, we have data cleaning and pre-processing, advanced data visualization, statistical analysis, and then the final project. So there's also the project-based uh, learning where the student have to analyze real-world data. So we have hospital data, uh, maybe bank data, data for core members, members of the National Youth Service Corps, and different forms of data where uh, students will be able to leverage to do analysis and to learn the process. So if you look at the way it's broken down, we have week one and two. We do introduction to the Python programming, Python for data analysis library. Uh, we do analysis, setting up of your Python environment. So an example is this. We have a pre-recorded video. So I would um, I would show a pre-recorded video just in a bit, uh, just to show what I'm talking about. You will see it in a moment. So the pre-recorded video that we had with one of our consultants that's been shared with us that we use in training the student is this so it shows us how to set up the python environment so it's like python for beginners so within one hour they are able to understand how to create this so yes yeah, so you can see so let me show you so to declare a variable we start with typing a name for that variable let's say h then we add an equal sign and then we type a value, let's say 20. So with this, we're storing the number 20 somewhere in our... So with this, you understand that student also learn uh, with this video. And then so I can stop sharing this and then reshare uh, my syllabus so that we can continue to understand um, what the design video looks like. So I have Python programming for data analysis, I have data cleaning, data visualization, and then statistical analysis for Python. And then ultimately, they learn with the real world project. Now, while doing all these, there's integration of so many things. The teacher serves as the facilitator of the learning process. It's a student-driven process, so they have hands-on. They have a community where they interact. And that's where I'm going to show you the Google Classroom now. Uh, so we have the Google Classroom. Um, okay, so you will see, oh, just a moment. This is not what I intend to share. Uh, you'll see the Google Classroom very soon. Google Chrome, share this. Okay, I don't know if you can see my screen, but... Okay, so this is introduction to data analysis with Python. This is our Google Classroom. This is my name. I'd actually made a lot of comments and time pass. You can see Joshua Kolaole adding new assignment, dictionary assignment. So uh, list in Python, list assignment. This is one of the um, so uh, asking a question. So we have a community, we have a student, they are free to ask questions. So this is our classroom. We have the home uh, calendar teaching. We have also leadership development as another class, but this class is uh, data analysis, basically. So, and we have other archived um, classes if we want to archive the classes. And then it could also allow for to do those who are enrolled. And so we, we can we can use this. So basically, this is how the Google Classroom works. It allows for interaction and social networking. Uh, and then if uh, the class works are here, so you can see intro to data analysis, intro to Jupyter Notebook, introduction to Python basics. So um, these have been taken at different points. So we can view different things here. And then the people, uh, this gives us the list of the people uh, in the class. Uh, as the teacher, and then these are the, the students. So they are taking this part of the course in statistics uh, just for their distance. So let me return back to my uh, the core of the assignment, uh, which is this. So I'll stop sharing and reshare again to be sure that um, that is actually showing properly. Um, that is the Microsoft Word document. 
So I have this, the blended learning. So I've explained that it's for advanced level students, the course syllabus, the learning objective I've shown then. Then the grading policy for us is more, uh, it's a pass or fail kind of thing based on the quality of project that is done. So we have the academic integrity statement, uh, uh, which uh, it, uh, at this point, because it's a collaborative learning, it's not like student cannot plagiarize, cannot do anything. So it's basically collaborative learning. Then the accreditation standards are set by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, Joint University Preliminary Examination Board, Interim Joint Matriculation Board, National University Commission. And even beyond that, we have the Ministry of Tertiary Education that is also involved with regulations and accreditation of schools uh, as it is. So the design approach is blended learning with a flipped classroom model. So we still get to meet in classrooms twice a week uh, for just one to two hours, but most importantly, all the learning are done uh, online. And then we have multiple teachers. So for those who are in some areas in Kwara State, Nigeria, they get to uh, do a face-to-face -face class uh, at the large office auditorium there. But for those who cannot make it down, then we do Zoom uh, classes. So the rationale is to combine the concept of pre-recorded lecture, like the one I shared, activity outside of class in a real-world scenario, where I said leveraging hospital data. So they go to hospital, they have this data from the electronic uh, health record with permissions, of course, and then uh, they're able to analyze such data. Then we, we could also analyze banking data as it way. So class time focuses on applying knowledge through discussions, problem solving, and collaborative project work. Exploring practice with Python platform. So this cater for diverse learning styles and promote deeper learning of what happens in a real workplace. So what we have done is like a covert approach where we're able to give them choice of what to do, ownership of the stuff, because each person has his own Python platform. They run different queries they want, uh, depending on what they want displayed on the UI environment, and they're able to integrate this and then ultimately the most important thing is each person is able to apply it to real world problems. Those who like the hospital environment or wants to work with hospital data, those who want to work with back bank data, those who want to work with data in agriculture and different areas so they have the freedom to choose which area the teacher is just serving as a guide on where they can get the data and how they can get the data and if permissions are needed and, and so on. So this design adopts a shared controlled approach. The instructor provide guidance structure and empowers students to take ownership of their learning. So it's self-paced online models, group project work are done, then presentations are held at different points where we have a touch base. And then it allows for independent research. So our goal is actually outcome-based education, but you see uh, the way the work is, we also need to drive competency-based education because the final exam, the student will be taking after the program for them to be able to move into 200 level would actually require them to be graded. So it will require some competence and they won't only be tested on data analysis alone. It's an integration of data analysis and several other concepts uh, that will birth um, a grade for them on the mathematics or on the statistics, as the case may be, for those who are doing this. So, and students can apply their knowledge. And what we've noticed over time is most students are done with the A level between the pro uh, when they are done with the A level and when they secure admission. A lot of them go for internship in different business organizations, healthcare institutions, and other sectors. And they're able to thrive well because of this hands on real life context learning where they work on their laptop, develop a lot of things, and they have a lot of Python codes in their JIT repo. So it helps them to be able to share their JIT repository with various employers, potential employers and they're able to get some small gigs that can keep them through and uh, they're able to solve real life problems, making our learning move away from the traditional uh, method of learning where teachers just download content but now to make the student get engaged, take full responsibility and get a hand-on knowledge and understand this concept uh, directly. So our focus is assessment as learning um, uh, as, as it is, but of course, we have the formative part of our assessment for learning, as a summative part of our assessment of learning, and then, uh, like you can see, we have the performance-based assessment as learning, where we're having in-class group activity, group project, and presentation, which allows them to show their skills and receive immediate feedback.
So, but we also have the online quiz part, discussion forum part, of course, in the Google Classroom, as you can see, midterm exam. So, moving towards the deeper concept of learning is actually the problem solving part. The fact that they actually approach hospitals, farms, different departments, schools, and um, different sectors of the economy to be able to work with them as an intern, harvest data while they're on the training, and then be able to gather the data and use it uh, for analysis and then create a visual dashboard uh, that the student will be able to. So it's a collaborate, this collaborate with you and there are open-ended questions. So basically, if we come to the uh, sample uh, design map that I created, uh, leveraging on the learning goals or outcome, learning activity and assessment strategy, student will be able to interpret and describe various data visualization. That, that will be a foundational knowledge. So what we've done is the video lecture, the interactive visualization and self-assessment quiz will help them do that. And these are the assessment strategy, the online quiz, the in-class discussion. Now for application, as we can see, student will be able to calculate and interpret basic statistical measures, mean, medium, mode, standard deviation, and, and so on, etc. with uh, with Python. So video lectures with practice exercises, collaborative online forum discussions, all this makes so we have the midterm exam in class group activity that is analyzing business data using statistical measures like that. And then the integration, student will be able to apply data analysis techniques to solve business problems and communicate fine, like I explained, business problems. So now we have several case study projects, analyze a real world business scenario using data analysis method and, and create a presentation summarizing findings and recommend. So final project presentation will be done, peer evaluation will be done, and instructor feedback would also be gotten. So the human dimension to things is for themselves and for others. For themselves, they were able to reflect and self-evaluate based on their beliefs and on their learning. Uh, of course, they have the online module, they have the case study project, application of practice to the real world, and development of learning philosophy, which is crucial for them. So others, because they have to share their learning experience and process with others, this will facilitate collaboration, group discussion, and group work evaluation. So they are ultimately review group work project and do group evaluation is the key to this. And then the caring part is uh, ultimately the learners are expected to develop a tutorial and coaching plan for supporting other learners and providing feed forward reviews to each uh, one another at uh, their works uh, as they are sharing the platform, the Google uh, platform, as I mentioned earlier. So the goal is for them to leverage the learning platform and plan for mastering data modulation and visualization and review the final tutorial study and coaching plan. How to ensure that they keep learning? We develop a framework for learning data analysis and visualization, uh, building up the framework and data models for data analysis so that we ensure that they keep learning, we make them develop a framework and a data model for themselves. So in the future, when they get different forms of data, they just leverage that framework and the model to be able to recreate the data analysis and visualization themselves. So reviewing this final framework and model for accuracy and consistency is our way of assessment uh, structure. Strategy. Now, uh, for, to, for to break this down into how it goes with what I've shown earlier from the syllabus. Week one and two, uh, develop and upload online modules for units one and two, that's visualization and descriptive statistics. Uh, week three, in-class session, which is focused on applying concept from the module. Week four, to see students complete online modules and assignment, uh, do all differential statistics and hypothesis testing. Week seven, in-class session, focus on applying concept from modules, uh, studies and group work. Week eight, they have their midterm exam, combination of multiple choice and short answer question. Then week 9 to 12 and then to 13, um, project and small group utilization, utilizing online resources and instruction consultation. And then final project presentation with peer evaluation and instructor feedback. So that is the way my uh, instructional design goes. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you for the opportunity to listen to me. Bye.